Have you ever found yourself building an Azure DevOps pipeline and realized that you need to connect it to an Azure tenant in order to deploy your resources? Well, we're going to have a look at how we can use Azure DevOps service connections to do this. We'll start with automatic mode before diving in and looking at a manual configuration. Once we've done this, then we'll have a look at the Azure CLI task and how we can use that service connection in the Azure CLI task to accomplish many things. Let's start with automatic service connections. All service connections, you need to go down to project settings, and then on the left hand side, select service connections. From here, we can create a new one. There are lots of types of service connections, but to connect to Azure, we need to use the Azure Resource Manager. From the six options, we're going to use the new Workload Identity Federation. We'll select the scope and then enter the service connection name, which we'll use later in our Azure CLI task. And that's all we need so we can click Save. Over in the portal, it's actually created as a service principle. However, unlike other options, it's not using client secrets, but a more secure federated credential that can only be used by Azure DevOps. Now let's have a look at manual connections. For this, we're going to need a managed identity. We can use one we already have or set up a new one. The first thing to do is add a role assignment. We need to add at least a reader permission to the scope that matches the service connection, in this case a subscription. But we can also add in other permissions. Back in Azure DevOps, we need to create a new service connection. Once again, we'll use the Azure Resource Manager. This time we'll select the manual mode. First thing to do is enter our service connection name. We're then presented with a number of details that we need to copy over into our managed identity. From the managed identity on the left hand side, we need to select federated credentials, adding a new one. The option we need is other. This then gives us the option to paste in our issuer URL and then our subject. Next we enter a name. This can't be changed, but is only shown in the Azure portal. We must now enter the subscription ID, which can be found on the overview page of your managed identity. And then also the subscription name, which is next to it. The final bit of information we need is the service principal ID. And this is actually shown as the client ID back in the managed identity. The other property we need is our tenant ID. And if you don't know where that is, you can find it under your tenant properties. Copy that in. This will allow us to verify and save it. And our connection is now ready to use with the name demo. So there we have it, two ways of creating a service connection. So let's see how we can use it. On our Azure CLI task, we just enter the name of our service connection, in this case, demo. Our inline script will then act as that user, in this case, listing all of the Azure resource groups. So let's see how that looks. We can see the task as it runs through, will log in as that service principal before finally executing our script, in this case, showing all of the resource groups. Thank you for watching. This has been my first video. So please do subscribe to be notified when the next one comes out. And let me know in the comments below any thoughts or feedback that you have 